All right, so you saw that first one, and you see I've marked this one here. Um, and the reason I've done that after the first one is uh, there's rights and lefts to this, and it would be pretty tragic if uh, I cut even one of them uh, uh, incorrectly in <laughs> the last one. Um, so I need uh, two rights and two lefts. So whenever you have a mirror situation, you got to be real, real cautious there that you uh, remember what you're doing. Um, otherwise, uh, you can get yourself in trouble. Now let's let's talk about this cutting tool for a sec. You guys watch that uh, that tool cutting, and uh, it's pretty impressive actually. Um, and this is a it's a high-speed cutter. It's not it's not carbide. And you saw that it's pretty impressive uh, material removal. And this is a fine pitch roughing end mill, or sometimes called a corn cob end mill. And um, these are great for lower horsepower machines. They're, their metal removal rates are really spectacular, actually. And, uh, and sometimes they perform better than carbide on lighter machines. Um, carbide kind of demands a, a rigid setup and a rigid machine and uh, um, those kinds of things. So uh, uh, many times you can't take advantage of uh, um, of the advantages of carbide. So these are great because uh, the cutting forces are low and the low horsepower consumption and high metal removal rates. As you can see, you can basically you know almost bury the cutter. So. Uh, so I'm going to set a few more of these up and uh, we're going to mow on these a little bit and, uh, um, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so you probably noticed uh, when I was doing the setup uh, on the first one, I put these little, uh, these little copper bits under here. Um, and the reason for that is, well, take a look at them. I happen to know that these particular clamps are not real smooth on the, uh, on the other side and I just stuck some copper underneath there and you see that there's some, it, it, it can put marks in your work and this is a kind of a nice surface, I don't want to chowder it up. So anyway, that was the reason there. So um, one thing you got to be real careful with uh, on these particular tools um, when you're taking big heavy cuts like that is they tend to they want to pull out of the collet because of the helix angle, okay? And uh, in fact, it happened to me on the very first one that I was cutting, and fortunately it was okay, but uh, um, that's what this little blue line was about. I marked it after I resecured the collet to make sure that it wasn't drifting out. Now, the right way to do it is to use one of these, which is an end mill holder, right, that fits in the R8, and it's positively retained, and we have a set screw that goes in the um, uh, the welded notch there, right? So you uh, stick that in there, and of course it's not gonna, oh, there it goes. So it's kind of a snug fit. And then uh, you find the, uh, you find the notch. There it is, okay. And then uh, orient the flat. And then what I like to do is to make sure that I'm against the upper side of the notch, I kind of try to pull it out as I'm tightening the thing up, and then uh, you secure that, um, put a gronk on that, <clears throat> like so, and then you use that. Now, it does add length uh, to the whole thing, so sometimes uh, uh, it's a compromise between rigidity and, uh, and tool retention, but we're gonna, we're gonna try it on this next one here uh, to have a positive tool retention there, okay? Definitely not as rigid as uh, with the uh, the tool in the collet, and uh, so I've had to. This cut isn't nearly as aggressive as the uh, first one that I did. 
It's about a half inch, a half inch radial and a half inch axial. Uh, you know, 13 millimeters by 13 millimeters. We're running 300 RPM. It's a one inch diameter tool, a 25 millimeter tool. Um, feed rate is, I don't know what the feed rate is. Uh, inch per minute or something like that. It's pretty stable right now, but uh, you can hear it. It's wanting to squeak a little bit because it's not a totally rigid setup.